morning Lagos welcome back this is still smooth 98.1 your love music love life station and it's time for us to pay visit to the locker room with Tega. <laughs> yes. Hello Tega. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Tega. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiastic I good tried, morning. Lagos. All right, just before we start the stories, just to let you know if you'd like to comment or um, you know join the conversation, here's our WhatsApp number, 0809 0981. You can also go on Twitter. The hashtag to use is... LockerRoom981. So while you're sending out those messages on Twitter, to Smooth981FM, add that hashtag LockerRoom981 to your messages. Okay, so we'll make our first stop in the USA, and it's time for us to look at um, the... Sport. <laughs> Los Angeles Lakers pull out of trade talks for Anthony Davis. Now the Los Angeles Lakers informed the New Orleans New Orleans Pelicans yesterday that they are pulling off trade talks for star Anthony Davis, the Los Angeles Times reported. But Lakers president of basketball operations Magic Johnson still wants the Pelicans to start making counter offers and will listen to them. According to Times sources, the Lakers had modified their offer to the Pel Pelicans and were willing to trade Lonzo Ball, Kylie, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ing Ingram, Josh Hart, Kentavious Caldwell Pope and Ivica Zubac to the Pelicans. In addition, they had agreed to part with two first round draft picks as to take Solomon Hill and his $12.7 million contract along with Davis. Just for Anthony Davis. Uh, it, it, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I think, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Anthony Davis, to me, would complete the Lakers squad, but it would only make sense if you can keep Lonzo Ball, Lonzo Ball and Kyle Kuzman. I understand you wanting to um, trade Ingram, Ingram and Josh Hart. That's fine with me, but you don't trade your future young talent in Kuzma and Ball just so that you can get Anthony Davis and there's no point getting Anthony Davis because there'll be problems everywhere else. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really shocked that the Lakers tried to push this so far. They offered everything and Pelicans knew they were desperate and that's why Pelicans, regardless of what was offered, Pelicans were asking for more, yeah. um, which is why talks broke down eventually. But when you've done something like put up your young stars and a core of your team for the trade, there is a lack of morale for the team to play and i guess that's why they went on to lose um their game against pacers by 42 whole points wow in fact at some point the, i mean lakers were trailing by 46 points so that four points that they saved really didn't change anything but the morale in the room would be in the locker room would be low because mm. you think about it or oh, any minute now you could be traded because of one, one guy and I, 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 I mean Kuzma and Lonzo Ball I can't hack what Mark Dijonso was thinking I can't hack what the Lakers are thinking right now but it's the most ridiculous thing and you're still going to give your first round picks later on what's the, Anthony Davis is one guy <laughs> I mean even if you were trading to get um, uh, um, Kevin Durant, you don't trade that much. Um, so I, I, I guess they, they've settled down and maybe when the Pelicans realize that their player really wants to leave and they're under some pressure, then it'd be a little easier to trade with them. Right now, they can smell desperation with the Lakers and they're asking for blood. Oh boy. Flying Eagles quest to become the first African team to qualify for the 2019 FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Poland has been put on the ice following a barren draw with South Africa yesterday at the state uh, general Seni Hunche in Nami. Now the Nigerians now search for the World Cup tickets in their last group match against host Niger Republic on Friday while Amajita battled Burundi in the other clash on the same day. Yes, um, so, so it, it did like, like we said I think it was Monday when Amunike was telling them look I've looked at the the South African team tactically mm. um, and we have to be a little careful um, so far, the, the Flying Eagles went into that game with a little bit of confidence and, and they came out with a draw there was no way to score um, with all a few of the chances they created they were not that clinical but a few of the chances they mm. created um, they, they weren't even converted and South Africa also put up a strong test so you, you look at that game and, and you begin to wonder exactly how prepared mm. is Nigeria exactly. for, for the World Cup but they face that tough opponent now or that tricky opponent let me call it that um 
and they have to qualify on the last game which is not something they wanted to do you want to qualify with a game to spare if you have the option and they did have the option but they've lost it now so um they now have to try and play against the niger side that played three three with burundi Mm. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I know you mentioned this the last yes. one. That's not easy to do. So 3-3 with Burundi, it, 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 it's tough. Like I said, when it comes to age grade football, women's football, even with the Super Eagles, they are, the gap is closing on, on the difference that used to be there. You get some teams that in the past you face and you say, okay, this is currently three points. Yeah. Um, but not, no, not this <laughs> not, But not these days. <laughs> this is, anybody can shock you. Uh, this is football. <laughs> Anything can happen. Yeah. yeah right. So I, I still think that they I, I still think that they can they'll qualify and they'll make it through. Okay. But it's just it's just harder now. It's not the it's not a tough match I wanted to play now. They want, they would have wanted to rest a few more before um, well, you know, you know, you know, traditionally, mm. not based on that, but traditionally, when we when we're facing a difficult team, we tend to do, we tend to do better than when it's an easy one because we are relaxed and sometimes we lose points for that reason. So maybe yeah, it's the thing. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I still think that no, I still think that no, it's not, it's not, it's not even. I, I, I don't doubt that they can qualify. It's just that. I mean, in a game that they thought they would relax is when they are going to have to put in effort. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Moving away from football, we go to Formula One, where Lewis Hamilton fares Max Verstappen the most. There's Red Bull boss Christian Horner. Max Verstappen is the driver Lewis Hamilton fares the most. Says the Red Bull team boss Christian Horner. He has all the skills to take on Lewis or, or Sebastian or whoever it is. He says, "I don't think he lacks anything to take those guys on." And he's probably the driver they fear the most. Luis is at a different stage of his career, Honor continued. He has all that experience, but he's 34. And at some point, it's only natural that the brightness of that talent will start to fade. <laughs> you haven't met Luis. <laughs> <laughs> you probably you haven't. <laughs> but but here's, here's what's interesting. No doubt that Max Verstappen, during the final races, of, of last season showed that he could compete all he needs is a good car uh, and red bull did have um for a few of those races they were competing um don't call don't call daniel ricardo but they were competing in the red bull and so this season it, it could be that it's not just between sebastian vettel and lewis hamilton they'd be the third person in the mix there in Max Verstappen and, yeah. and he's tricky. He's the kind of guy nobody wants to nobody wants to battle him or raise him one on one because he's he's a damn full driver. He'll take you out. <laughs> like he's not afraid to push. He's not afraid to make moves. Lewis Hamilton with a little bit of experience to say it's better to finish the race with a few points. Yeah. And lose it, and then fight another day than to crash halfway through the race. Max Verstappen <laughs> like he's he's all in. He's now or never do or die. <laughs> so he just. He just goes head on, and, and most people don't want to don't want to race with him, don't want to battle with him. I think that 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 desire to risk it all oh, yeah. is what makes him a very dangerous opponent. So let's see, the season starts all the way in March, mm. so there's still time for March this. is next month. Yeah, it's all the way. Through. <laughs> <laughs> I almost believed it was two months away. I just finished it all the way. I was like, oh, it's, still, it's still all the way. <laughs> We are still in this. Uh, November, this February is short. <laughs> so, Very Chimo, Chimo short. Victor from Alaba International sent in this message on WhatsApp. A quick reminder here if you're just joining us in the locker room here on Smooth 98.1, please send your messages to WhatsApp on 0809 So, Chimo Victor says the Flying Eagles choose to drop points against South Africa, putting them in a tight corner now. They must defeat the, this Niger Republic in their last game. Wishing them the very best of luck. I'm sure they need it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp said the referee's performance was affected by an assistant referee's mistake. But for Sadio Mane's goal against West Ham, in Klopp's words, he says, and I quote, I heard our goal was offside. I'm pretty sure the ref knew that. In 50 50 situations, it was always a free kick for the other team, which was hard and did not make life easy. The German added, as a human being, if I know I've made a, mis a big mistake in the first half, I do not want to open the gap anymore. <laughs> okay, so here's what is interesting. The referee made the mistake for Liverpool to get a point. Mm. Because without that mistake, Liverpool would have lost that game. Mm. Um, and so him blaming the referee for other decisions that were not taken during the match, it's just... It's the beginning of hypocrisy. I don't understand it because the referee, the referee called in your favor, even in the final minute where Divoko Rigi was offside yeah. and he almost went ahead to score, mm. score the winner. The, 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 the assistant referee didn't even call it. Mm. 
so the referee was in your favor so for you to be questioning the referee i'm glad the fa is calling him to question him <laughs> the first question that you ask him is are you when was your last mental check that's the first question that you ask him yeah, in, in, and then he's probably rooting for fair play so who knows? <laughs> which fair play <laughs> he's angry that he didn't win the game and he thinks that the referee made a mistake because the referee uh, uh, to, to not make calls for him mm. because the referee made one call for him in the first half but look guy trust guy, me guy <laughs> all right take i will come back and um, we'll close the doors to the locker room for a moment and then we will take a break when we come back it's still the locker room with Tega and of course valentine thank you thank you very much Make sure the internet is working. My name is and I think there's a, it's a bit, um, it was a bit slow earlier on. My phone is going up. Two tips to help stop the spread of fake news on WhatsApp. Look out for signs that the news might be fake, such as edited pictures. Then verify with reliable sources to check if the news is in fact true. And if you realize that you have received a fake news, warn the person that sent them to you. This way you can help stop the spread of fake news. If you send me fake news again, I will block you. This message is from WhatsApp. Love music. Love life. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. Check out KLM Dream Deals. Buy your tickets from now till 8 February 2019. And enjoy up to 30% off in economy and business class cabins to Paris, Houston, London, Washington, Toronto, and New York. Travel from now until 30th June 2019. Tickets can be bought online at www.klm.com.ng. Any KLM ticket offers or your travel agent. For more information, call 080-632-15665. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. This is IBK. This is IBK. Even if you stop the ship, I think That thing doesn't work, does it? Because no message is coming in. Sorry? No message is coming in. Oh, yes. My name is Jimmy Abadi. Lagos needs jobs for the black population. We need to grow well, and diversify the economy. There are so many untapped opportunities That's around incomplete. education, yeah. around technology, yeah. around so the water, you? around waste yeah. management, yeah. around yeah. entertainment. Vote for Jimmy Abadi and the MC Busari to lead the Lagos of your dreams. And now, because yes, we know we finished that, but suppose we can hear it. So you can come up with the message first. Yes, so that was the music, the breakout tool. Do you need us in beautiful family. This you come up with the messages. Okay. And so that line now that would have come after the ad. No, um, okay, the locker room for me. Okay, for me. So after the up with the message. Okay. One message. Thank you. Just one message. We'll take what we can get, right? Alright, studio. to Smooth 98.1 and we're talking sports inside of the locker room. Locker room 981 is a part of Smooth Breakfast with Ayo and Valentine and with Tega, Tega Supreme. That's our handle on social media. We have messages in and this <laughs> Joby Victor is back again. He says, Jürgen Klopp should stop disgracing the Dutch <laughs> people with this statement because I'm ashamed on his behalf. He should better go for Thanksgiving because the referee assists them not to lose that match. Alright, next one from Tunde here says, I believe Nigeria can still qualify for the group. All what they need is a win or a draw. Niger Republic are not a threat. Thank you, Tunde. Thank you, Tunde. All right, now this is from Ugo via a Liverpool fan. He says, this thing is not complete. All Klopp is saying... Complex. It's not complex, sorry. All Klopp is saying is that the officials made an error not to call the offside that let Liverpool go and then appear to want to compensate for that by favouring West Ham in the 50-50 incident. 
Yes, as coach, you shouldn't say that, but it's not an outrageous comment. No, no, nobody said it was outrageous. We just said he should be quiet and be humble. <laughs> he was given a point when he should have gone home with nothing. <laughs> All right, okay, now uh, moving away to our next story Barcelona to wait on Messi but will not take any risks. Lionel Messi will be given until the last minute to prove his fitness ahead of Barcelona's Copa del Rey semi final against Real Madrid on Wednesday last today. But coach Ernesto Valverde insists he will not take any risks. I have seen, I have not seen him yet, and I don't have an answer about where he said in a press conference. I don't know. There's a training session, and we'll see how he is, whether he can do it, and whether he's in the right condition. Then we will decide. If he's fit, he will play, and if, he, if he's not, he will not play. Uh, yes, um, it's a tricky one. Mm. So the Copa del Rey um, draws brought us an, another El Clasico. Um, <laughs> sorry. So El Clasico, actually, because mm-hmm. the, the second leg would be on the 27th at the Bernabeu. Um, so it's, and, and Barcelona would have liked to draw somebody else, at least for the first leg, they'll be able to rest Messi for a while. But with the Clasico, it, they cannot afford to not have Messi. Like I said, without Messi, that team the, looks just a, a tad different. Mm. Okay, let me not lie. That team looks like Valencia without Messi, hey. and so, <laughs> and so they need him. It's such a big game like this, especially oh with the, especially with the form that Real Madrid are coming into this game with. So are you just saying that they cannot win this match if Messi is not there? I'm not saying they cannot. I'm just saying it's going to be a struggle. <laughs> when you see when when you see Messi in the lineup as a Barcelona fan or as a Real Madrid fan, as a Barcelona fan. You're a little more confident as yeah. a real magic fan. You're a little more fearful yeah. when there's no mercy in this one. People like we can take these guys, Joe. The uh, the approach will be totally different. And and real magic are in, are in good form now. Sometimes they've had to grind out results. Sometimes they've had to um they've played a few f- free flowing game. Um, but they are, they are winning now, and so they're carrying that winning momentum into this game against Barcelona. And Barcelona will want to have all their arsenals pointed at um, I mean on ground and so with Messi holding his groin um, against was it yeah it was against Valencia that um, he, he, he started feeling this this pain in his thigh with him holding his groin that day everybody's heart just sank a little <laughs> bit and Real Madrid just smiled a little wider so <laughs> you come into this game and the first leg is played at the it's Camp Nou so advantage Real Madrid because they're going to be playing the second leg at home mm. um, and with that home advantage it's, it's just beautiful so I think for the good news for most Barcelona fans is that yesterday Messi and Dembele trained with the team as opposed to on Monday that Messi was rested mm. um, so Messi and Dembele trained with the team so either that way they may be available um, for this game but if I'm the coach and Messi says leg is still playing in mind. I will not risk it. They are bigger fish to fry. I'll say that. Is it risk worth it? If it's not 100%, is it worth the risk? They are bigger fish. So you you can just try to hold out a draw at Camp Nou and then on the 27th, when he's fully fit, you can now go all out. Mm. But for you to want to risk it now with all, with UCL coming up and all, it's not not wise. Right. Charles Chidozier sent in a message on Twitter with the hashtag LockerRoom981. Charles Chidozier says, These South Africans are becoming a huge thorn in our flesh generally. First with the Super Eagles, then with the Super Falcons, and now with our Flying Eagles. Hope the corruption stripping NFF are watching. Yeah. Charles. Charles, I'm not around though. That is not a good description. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's talk about Pep Guardiola. He says that the competition at the top of the Premier League is so fierce that the title is likely to be decided on the final day of the season and may even come down to goal difference. He said, and I quote, the first message is to win the game and the second one is, if you can score, score. If you can avoid conceding, do it because maybe you could win the Premier League on goal difference. I am pretty sure that the winner will be decided by the last fixture or the last two, I'm sure that's what he says. Yes, um, so because of what, because Liverpool dropped the ball on, on Monday, it's now three points between Manchester City in second place mm. and Liverpool in first place. Um, what makes it even more interesting is that Manchester City is going to be playing Everton today, and if they if they manage to win that game, because they too have had their own pitfalls, yes. um, the most recent against Newcastle. If they do manage to win that game, they could go to number one on goal difference. 
And so he's saying that's how close this title race wow. is that yeah. somebody could actually win this EPL title on goal difference. Yeah. But it's still advantage Liverpool, if you ask me. Yeah. Like I said before, or, or like Manchester City when they um when they go into when they have bad games, they don't come out with anything. Liverpool still managed to come out with a draw. draw. Whether it is offside goal. <laughs> 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 I right. that shit. It took me a while, but I did. <laughs> but, but at least they, they come out with at, at least a point. So I'll, I'll say so far it's still it's still advantage Liverpool. They can still go on to win this. They still have um if Ma- Manchester City still go goes up today, they still have that game in hand mm. that they can play and win and, and, and then go back to the top. So it, it's a very it's a very tight one. I totally agree with him. It's not just tight um one and two, but three, four and five mm. is still open. So yes it, it, it's, yeah three four and five is still open. So there's any, any any possibility somebody could drop out and somebody could move in. Oh, yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's an interesting APL season this, this year. year. Alright now we still have we have another comment here from Chimobi and he's challenge or he's asking you or challenging you as Tega I'd like you to call the game between Barcelona and Real Madrid and this Man City versus everything game. He wants to bet. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he also says, with or without Messi tonight, I see Barcelona losing this match by three goals to one. I'm happy Real Madrid is now on form. Interesting. Let's go to Twitter for more messages. The Charles Studios here comes back with a message here on Twitter. It says, Liverpool is choking on their own pressure. Panicky players, bewildered fans, and a somewhat confused coach. The title is slipping away through their unsteady fingers. As for the Formula One, it's initial grabber. After much noise, Hamilton is just it. <laughs> last, last. <laughs> All right, last, last, he will steal the show. But... All right, so let's move on. Uh, there's uh, another message here from C- Sim- Simon uh, from Amor. Amor, he says, Good day, smooth him. Hello, Simon. Please take it. Can you also talk about National Stadium Surrey Lagos closed down? Please update us on it. That's political. President is coming. You should have asked freshly pressed people. <laughs> right, so Simon, in case you didn't listen, freshly pressed is at seven thirty. So join us tomorrow, tomorrow. morning. <laughs> right, Rooney says his talent. Now this one is close to my heart, and I'll tell you why. Rooney says he, he um, still has talent to compete in Premier League. Former England captain Wayne Rooney, who helped revitalize one of Major League Soccer's original superpowers when he joined DC United last year, still feels he possesses the quality to compete in the Premier League. The 33-year-old Manchester United and Everton captain said he was not a fading force and he could still compete against some of the world's best players. He said, if I'm being honest, quality-wise, I can still play in the Premier League. I know that. I've always been a confident person, so I've, I have high expectations of myself. That's really speaking. He also continued saying, I came here expecting to do well. I think there was a surprise from people who had their opinions, which is fair enough, but I never doubted myself. Mm, I, I like the fact that he didn't doubt himself, but I'd like to take some of those sleeping pills. Maybe he took some <laughs> sleeping pills with alcohol again. What is wrong with him? He went to Everton, <coughs> couldn't fit in, and then he went to to to, to play American football. Look, I, I don't doubt Rooney's hard work. I don't that. doubt it at all. Take His that. work ethic is on point on the pitch. But football is moving a little faster now and he's getting a little older. Oh gosh. <laughs> you, know what, you know I'm so sad about this news. I remember very clearly the heydays of Wayne Rooney. He dominated the headlines in English football. He was the star. Like he was just so to now see him coming up to defend himself is so disheartening. Yeah, it's soldier come, soldier go. <laughs> <Honestly, laughs> <honestly, laughs> then I read the story, I was like, this is so unfair. Like, honestly, because I remember when he really was like a demigod, right. he was he was so loved and Yeah, but he's the same way, he's the same way, so he's the same way in DC. So I remember this game, he was going to play this game in DC, and a few friends of mine um, were freaking out to go and watch the game. Then they get to the game and... We, we're going back to the hotel and Wayne Rooney was coming with us to our hotel. You can oh. imagine the madness in the car. I was like, it's Wayne Rooney. He's over the hill. He's not. He's <laughs> over the hill. Mind yourself. It's not like he's Messi or Ronaldo. It's Wayne Rooney. Stop shouting. Try like this. Why are you like this, nigga? <laughs> Moving on now, we have the uh, messages. Actually, Emma from Akoka sent this one on WhatsApp. From uh, He said, Liverpool ambition this season seems to be overtaking Tottenham Hotspurs as the choking team of the English Premier League, small West Ham. We don't they flop, we don't they cut tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know, cool down, just cool down, he says. Oh. Oh boy. 
Now let's go to this next uh, story. Eden Hazard. Eden Hazard has said that he has made a decision on his Chelsea future, but has not expanded on what it is. The 28-year-old has said that he had wanted to leave Stanford Bridge after last summer's World Cup and that a move to Real Madrid, a club he'd been strongly linked with, would be a dream. Hazard has 18 months left on his Chelsea contract and it is unclear whether he will extend the stay beyond 2020. In his words, the Belgian international said, I know what I'm going to do. I've decided. What do you think is going to be better? <laughs> this, is, this is interesting. Uh, um, <laughs> at, at this point in time, I'm thinking that he has decided that he's going to move on. Mm, um, okay. So what it is is that he's just waiting for the for the bid to be right. Mm. So he, he has he has told us now that he has made up his mind about where he's going to be next. So summer, I expect a quick move. I don't expect that he will stay down and when the club comes along, he'll say, um, he's "I'm thinking about sure. it," or he'll be waiting for. Hope um, he'll be waiting for maybe the new coach because I don't know how long Sari will be there. It's Chelsea. <laughs> Then the higher empire anyhow. <laughs> so maybe he will say, no, let me wait and see who the new coach is and see if I'm going to stay. So I don't think that's it. I think what it is is that he, he may have made up his mind that it's time to move. Mm -hmm. And if it's Real Madrid that's really coming, which means they're going to be bringing a lot of money and he'll be playing with a club for a club with tradition. Mm -hmm. So it is a yes guaranteed, regardless of the fact that he has 18. Um, 18 months left on his um, contract. On his contract. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the fact that there may be money issues, I think he has already decided right now mm. well, you know, that I'm moving. When it comes to a team like Real Madrid, many people say that can you really refuse an offer from, I mean, the greats like Real Madrid, Barcelona? Has there been any player? Obviously, I'm sure there have been players, but very far in between. Who would say? Uh, yeah, Thierry Henry, but he was old. <laughs> 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 but he, he rejected Real Madrid and went to, to Barcelona. He still went to Spain. Yeah. Um and then won the UEFA Champions League with yeah. the trophy that so he, he, wasn't was, too old he was he was looking for. Mm -hmm. But but what it is is yes, there are there are players that, that I don't think it's a club that you can easily refuse. They will pay the money. Yeah. And it's a club with prestige. With prestige. Yeah. So so it's rare. But if you ask me, some players should have rejected Real Madrid, right. especially early on earlier on in their career. For the simple reason that if you, if you are, I mean, later on in your career, you've won a few things or you've yeah. done a few things, take Real Madrid. If they don't win, they don't win. You have made your money. money yeah. um, and if you don't play as much as you used to play, you can say to yourself, I've played enough football. Mm -hmm. I can afford to sit on the bench for, for a few more minutes. Yeah. Um, but if you're a young guy starting out a career and Real Madrid sees you and says, like Gareth Bale, Real Madrid, <laughs> yeah, I think I don't think Gareth Bale should have moved when he moved. Yeah, I don't think so. So it should be sort of a retirement plan after having a great career, not retirement as in you are out and out, like being really. I, I don't but, want to call it retirement plan. Mm. I think it should be a decision you take when you're a little more experienced. All right, okay, fantastic. Yeah, wow. not retirement. Retirement plan is China. Anybody that doesn't have China as retirement <laughs> plan, they have not planned well. All right, we have this final comment here on Twitter. This is from Sweet Gener Generis. Ade Williams Knight. He says, Do you think a messy less Barcelona can play this on form Real Madrid team without losing? I think they would win if they use Messi. Mm. I, I don't think we doubted that. It was the fact that Messi mm -hmm. might not be in perfect mm -hmm. condition to actually be playing. Mm -hmm. All right, Tega. A final message here okay. from Chimobi. Victor it says, uh, Eden Hazard should stop all this campaign because he will surely move to Real Madrid. <laughs> I think we've called that already. Yes, we have. <laughs> yes, we have. On final right. notes, special thanks to every one of you for sending the messages on WhatsApp. We'll continue this conversation on social media. Follow Tega at Tega Supreme or at LIS International to get the updates on the ladies in sports. And uh, Tega will be back again on Friday. Oh. All right. <laughs> well, we're still here. Yes, we're still goes. here. And um, come 9 a.m., we have a special for you on Lagos right. Talk 981. Before then, enjoy the music and we will, we will be back. What happened? The people played all day.